Uh, anybody in my business can talk about yesterday. Let's talk about tomorrow. And if you do that, sometimes your crazy theories uh, fall flat and, and you look like an idiot. But I'm OK with that because uh, some of my theories are right. I've written books about them. I said at the end of last year with LeBron James, I came out for a couple of segments. I got, you know, people just attacked me, said I was an idiot. This is ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. I said LeBron should retire for a year. Take a year off. You just got divorced in Cleveland. You don't, you don't move to Los Angeles and remarry. Take a year off. This morning, ask yourself, he should have. He should have. He should have taken the year off. Surveyed the league. Recharge his body. Do all the movies, the TV shows, the pizza company. Get it out of your system. Have dinner with Magic and Rob Palenka. Talk about Brandon Ingram, Kuzma, Lonzo Ball. Travel around the league and recruit players. Oh, yes, it's not tampering when you're retired. Go to the All-Star game. Sit front row at the Warriors with Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson. Be their friend. Buddy up. Private jet them. Take them to concerts. LeBron's always been the player empowerment guy. He didn't empower himself. He was dating. He got divorced. Marriages. Dude, you don't get back into the, you don't get married in another two months. Take some time off. LeBron James had earned the right to get off the treadmill. Just think of all the advantages. I was in Colorado this weekend at a celebrity ski event, and I got stuck in an airport for nine hours. They had avalanches and stuff. And I talked to the CEO who built a company and sold it. I said, what'd you do afterwards? He said, I got off the treadmill for 20 months surveyed my industry, watched other people make mistakes. You can't see those when you're working every day. You can't. You're, you're too busy dealing with your own minutia. You're in too many meetings. He goes, you step off the treadmill, survey the landscape. Man, it's a ton of clarity. Michael Jordan retired twice, recharged his batteries. Roger Clemens had a year. Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, some injury, some not. They came back recharged, refocused. Most of us can't take a year off because, myself included, we can't afford it. We just can't afford it. But if you can afford CEO, athlete, to step back, recharge, refocus, get some things out of your system. When, when LeBron went, it's Cleveland, and there's Miami, and it's back to Cleveland. There's a bunch of conflict moves to Los Angeles and gets married again. What? Time out. Slow down. Whoa. Date. A little. Take a breath. This whole year for LeBron has been, couldn't we all admit, kind of the unfocused LeBron. It's been the unfocused LeBron. L.A. does that to you. You move to Los Angeles. Who want to go to the beach? When I moved to Los Angeles, I'm a West Coast guy. For six weeks, I was on a boogie board every day. I was doing Los Angeles, going to Dodger games, going to USC practice, going to the beach every day. And then after about a year, I'm like, yeah, I'm not a go to the beach every day guy. I'm going to go back to watching movies, reading books and being a homebody. But L.A. does that to you. New York does that to you. Big cities do that to you. And there's a lot to do. Can you imagine if LeBron James would have spent the last five months? Just think about this. Going to Warrior games. Watching KD and Clay. All-star game, dinners with Magic and Palenka. Listen, man, LeBron's been on the treadmill too long. Breaks for people who can afford them almost always work. Andrew Luck got hurt, could not play for a year. Came back this year, a smarter quarterback, Fewer mistake quarterback, gets hit less quarterback, allowed the Colts to build up around him. The best thing that ever happened to Andrew Luck was not playing, getting some time, some clarity, some space. It's not like Andrew Luck didn't deserve it. He'd taken a beating. Peyton Manning had taken a beating. Roger Clemens, George Foreman. You sit around, most of us, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you drive to work, you get your coffee, you get on the treadmill, you work hard. And we do that because we have to do it. We got kids, we got mortgage payments. But the people in society that don't have to should take a breath. Michael Jordan took two years off. We don't even remember him. Never heard of his legacy. 
Peyton Manning missed a year. Didn't hurt his legacy. George Foreman actually was more popular when he came back the second time. Roger Clemens. Wait, whatever you think of him, nobody talks about the year off. It was too much. It was too much. LeBron has been unfocused. He's a kid. He's in his early 30s. He moved to L.A. He wanted to do L.A. for a year. Should have taken a time off. I think if you asked him privately, LeBron would admit, I needed to recharge. I needed to refocus. I wanted to do L.A. This has been a complete waste of his energy. Um, so tonight's actually interesting. LeBron James will likely pass Michael Jordan tonight on the all-time scoring list uh, if he gets uh, over 12 points. So there's that. And I could spend time talking about MJ and LeBron. I've called LeBron the greatest Swiss Army nice I've ever seen. Uh, LeBron does more things well than any player I've ever watched. I would never deny that. Uh, Michael is the greatest single scorer and defender, two-way player I've ever seen in his prime. They're really different players. Michael's a scorer first. Uh, LeBron's more of a distributor slash scorer. He look, he's a little bit more like magic. Um, but be that as it may, I spend a lot of time on this show telling you how great LeBron is and how he matches up with Michael Jordan. He's a bigger, stronger, better shooting, better range, better passing, better rebounding uh, version of Michael. But, but let me for a second, let me for a second talk about why I don't buy stats. And LeBron will blow Michael away with stats. I don't buy stats. Carl Malone's the second leading scorer in NBA history. I watched him shrink a dozen times, half of them live in the playoffs. Russell Westbrook, Mr. Triple Double. Yeah, but, you know, he can't shoot and he's a guard. Stats are not touch. Stats are not a witness. Stats are not eyes. Stats are not being there. I saw Michael Jordan play at 40 years old. We'll roll a tape. I'm in the crowd. If you slow it, you could probably see me. Michael was 40. It was at Portland. I was a sportscaster. He played 41 minutes. He was 11 of 19. He scored 25 points and had seven assists. I was under the basket, upper right. He was easily the best player on the floor at 40. LeBron is 34 years old. He will never be as good as Michael Jordan was at 40. Michael Jordan, folks, it doesn't make sense. He retired twice. He got the hell beat out of him in a physical Eastern Conference. He was a cigar-smoking, steak-eating, wine-drinking, card-playing maniac who didn't sleep. He left a sport and played another and came back and was still a mile better than Magic. I was at his last game at 40 years old. The Portland team, I think, won almost 50 games. The Washington team had some good players. Michael was 40. It was the last game he ever played in Portland, the home of Nike. And he was easily the best player on the floor. Easily. LeBron James at 40 will not be in an NBA game six years from now, and we're all going, wow, LeBron against Milwaukee. He's easily the best player on the floor. I spent a lot of time telling you how great LeBron is. But the most remarkable night, I've lived in eight states, I've been to 49, I apologize to South Carolina. I've been to every big sporting event except the Kentucky Derby. One of the most unbelievable experiences of my life, and I was sitting next to my friend Brian Light Gibb at the Rose Garden, was this night. 40 years old, after getting the hell beat out of him in the Eastern Conference when you had hand checks and forearm shivers. Three years of college, retired twice, went and played baseball, cigars, steaks, gambling, 40 years old, easily best player on the floor, on a good Portland team, on a night when players were playing against their idol. I mean, it was like you got up to fight Muhammad Ali. You got up to play Michael Jordan. You wanted to stop Michael Jordan. 11 of 19, they couldn't. 
Seven assists, 41 minutes. More minutes than any other player. I don't buy stats. LeBron will be a tidal wave of stats over Michael Jordan. But I'll tell you one thing LeBron will never be. As good as Jordan at 40. No way. No how. Hey, MJ couldn't hit the curve in baseball, but he hit 40 and was still unbelievable. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.